I opened the doors to the public outside. So if everybody could tweet, launch conference is amazing, doors open to the public, and uh, check in on Foursquare. Let your friends know to come and see the Tesla Model S and all those great startups out there. It would be really helpful for those aspiring uh, demo pick companies. We've got an amazing, amazing panel of judges that are taking the stage right now. Um, these are some of the best, brightest, uh, and most successful people in our industry, and we're odd to have them with us. Tony Conrad from True Ventures, uh, Matt Coffin, Lower My Bills, sold to Experion for $500 million, angel investor in over 40 companies, I believe now. Sky Dayton created the internet, uh, Earthlink, uh, Boingo took it public recently, many other things. Um, also had a spectacular failure in Helio um, to go with those two huge wins. Nobody's perfect. Uh, listen, he's created billions of dollars in value, and hey, he, he burned a couple hundred million trying to com compete against Steve Jobs. No big deal. Um, Brad was our winner, of course, last year from Room 77, and he's such a mensch that he put up $100,000 in prize money to support the event. Cyan Bannister has been angel investing uh, for a couple years now. We've done a ton of great startups together, including Reportive and Backupify, I believe. What else have we done together? A bunch of them. Um, Thumbtack. Thumbtack is doing Thumbtack. Uber. Uber, hey Tech now. Track. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Uber's working out pretty well. Yep. Um, and uh, you also put up a prize. I don't even know if we added it to the total. I hope we did. Uh, I did. You yes, did? 50, great. $50,000. Dave Goldberg um, created launch.com, actually. Exactly. J J Jason stole my name. I stole Dave's name. Good to see you. <laughs> Dave created launch.com, uh, sold it to Yahoo. They have the domain name now. Anybody who works at Yahoo, please give me the domain name, please. <laughs> I have launch.co. Jason, Jason's going to do a hostile takeover of Yahoo for the name. Yeah, exactly. I was like, yes, I will take the president job. You have to give me the .com, <laughs> launch.com. They were like, no, we're going to sit on that domain forever. I think so. Uh, and of course, Shervin uh, Pishavar has been uh, in my orbit uh, on this very stage launching product. A judge, grand jury member, angel investor, and uh, advisor to the President of the United States. Um, um, and his, I mean, basically, his path is now, when I look at him on path, it's basically Obama, his kids, Obama, nightclub, popping bottles, Obama, Obama popping bottles at a nightclub. I mean, I don't know, what is this life you're living, Shervin? It's unbelievable. Okay. I don't know which path you're following. <laughs> I'm following your path. Uh, and of course, Uber launched now in Los Angeles, and that yeah. was fantastic. It was awesome. It was last night. It was, it's growing really fast there. Okay. So we have an amazing group of entrepreneurs and uh, angel investors. In fact, almost all, all of them have been. Oh, and Dave, of course, is doing SurveyMonkey now, which recently, he won't say, but I will, is a billion-dollar valuation raised $800 million. I don't know what. It just... Another one of these huge press releases, doing fabulous Survey Monkey, great product. Um, I've used it for years. Everybody who's on this panel has operated a business and also angel invested or venture invested in Tony's case. Uh, so this is as good as it gets in terms of panels. Um, and we'll have a little discussion with them as well. But right now we're going to go to, if I can find the piece of paper, I have it here somewhere, our first company. Uh, okay, and um, to my... Uh, Judges, you guys know the rules. Phones, laptops off, Shervin, no tweeting, Shervin, no path, Shervin, no Uber rides while we're watching. Full focus on the startups. Five minutes they'll have on stage to tell you about their dreams and hopes, and then we'll ask questions, and we'll whip through this real quick. First up, AppStack. Hi, I'm Steve. This is John, and we're from AppStack. AppStack makes it easy for local businesses to get mobile customers. And all we need to get a local business mobile customers is a phone number. So let's go ahead and type in a phone number. Um, this is a phone number from Image Maker Salon in Murrieta. It's a salon I actually frequent. Um, I get a lot of highlights there. So what we're doing right now is we're automatically going out to the web from Foursquare to Yelp to Facebook to Twitter to websites they built in the past to Yellow Pages. We're finding all the data for them so they don't have to do anything. We're automatically building them a brand new HTML5 web app so they can just sit back, relax, and watch the app being built. In a matter of seconds, the application's complete, and all we're doing now is running it through a grading system. So let's sit back and wait. As we're waiting, we're downloading all the photos from Facebook, from Twitter, everything we need to actually build this app. The app's done. It appears right in front of them. 
So Image Makers got an A. We collected all the necessary information we need to build them a mobile web app from galleries they put on other services to the about us information and contact information. We're a couple clicks away from completing this app. So we hit continue. We automatically confirm that they, have, they offer these services. Since we automatically know that they're a hair salon, we, can no, we notice what services they offer. So we hit continue. We just confirm some promotions that we're recommending that they should offer to their new customers. And we hit continue again, and we're done. It's as simple as that. Now we're going to take them straight to their dashboard. We need to solve the problem of getting them customers. We've automatically built them a web app. Now we need to get the new customers in the door. So go to the advertising panel. Let me go right there. How many people have actually set up an AdWords campaign? Raise your hand. Sucks, right? Campaigns, ad groups, ad, ad copy, keywords, all that kind of research they don't want to do. All they care about is customers. Since we're experts in this, what we can do is we can normalize all the traffic estimates that Google's giving us and say, listen, how many customers do you want and how much do you want to spend? We take care of the rest. If you adjust the miles you want to advertise your business, the amount of customers that you could reach changes. We make it dead simple for them to get mobile customers. If you have a local phone number, AppStack can get you customers. So all of our clients start on a free trial basis, and this is the kind of results that they're seeing. Customers are getting 45 to 100 new leads of new customers for a simple package of $59.95. It's dead simple. We've solved the mobile problem for small businesses. So we started selling this December 19th. Um, to five closed verticals and private beta. And since December 19th, we've added $50,000 of recurring billing. We just passed that mark this morning. Are you finished? Oh, I'm done, yeah. <laughs> I, that was a, <laughs> that was, that was a good end note to end on, so I'm just, good. Just next time say, boom. Boom, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, I, I saw our, a great panel very focused on this. Thoughts from our panel? What do you guys think when you see it? Dave, you have a reoccurring revenue. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think it's. I mean, I think it's cool. I mean, how are you planning to get it distributed out to businesses? Like, yeah. So the, right now we have an inside telesales team that we market to. We call them. We offer small businesses free trials. They're signing up like crazy. We've signed up over 1,200 small businesses. 75% of those businesses have converted into paying customers out of the free trial. And they're paying $60 a month uh -huh. for, the, for the app and then whatever they want to spend through you so on So $60 AdWords. is inclusive, it includes $40 of Google spend and a $20 system fee. They can upgrade on top of that and add more ad spend on top of their package. We make it dead simple for them to do that. How many more customers do you want? This is what you got to spend. Got it. So you're get, your, your revenue is 20 bucks a month you know, Correct. when you subtract out the ads. Plus, yeah. No, it's cool. Does any of the ad spend flow through the recurring revenue, or is that all the? It flows through the recurring revenue. Yes. It does. Yes. So how many customers is fifty thousand? Just to so right it? now it's roughly just a little over a thousand customers. Hey, how does that work on you? Didn't the authentication? So I, Jason has a business, and I don't like Jason, which <laughs> is the case. Is that um, and I grab his phone number. Mm -hmm. Right? How does that work? How do you know that I'm, that I'm J not Jason and I'm actually Matt? So that's not a problem we're trying to solve right now. I mean, there's no authentication in AdWords either if you want to okay. advertise a small business. Yeah. It's, we don't see that as being a big issue. Okay. Okay. Got it. So how do you build the front end of your funnel here? Because if you're getting 75% conversion, um, I would expect you to have a lot more customers. So how, how are you actually getting people to the front end? Because that's historically the most challenging thing with these SMB businesses. Is how, do we, how do we acquire them initially? So well, get them into the funnel so you can actually have an inside sales guy or gal call them. and. So we're just cold calling them. right now, offering them a free trial, and they love it. They love the fact that these people don't even have websites. So offering them a mobile app, since they already have like a Facebook page or something else, and saying, listen, we're not only going to, we're going to give you free customers. Right? I want to give you a free mobile app. And if you don't like it, you don't have to pay anything. And they love that. So we're signing them up for like no, crazy. I got that piece. But how, so right now, you're just calling. So that's your funnel. Yeah, that's our, yeah, yeah. We can't. That's, that doesn't scale. So we're as inefficient as that? possible right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. a, sales rep, a sales rep at this stage, right off the street, uh, one of them closed 13 of these in a single day. On average, they're closing five or six a day. In my last company, I took house values public. We had 300 sales reps just selling to real estate agents. Yeah, so my question is not about closing. I got that. I, I want to come, the question is, how do you build the front end of the funnel, right, to where you can actually have people to contact? 
So you're doing it now. How are you calling those people? How are you getting those numbers? We're refining. But where where do you get their numbers? So we go to Google Maps. Uh huh. We look up hair salons, and we have the reps. They they're trained to gather their own leads and stuff like that. Okay. So just just to support with you, first, do you know what your customer acquisition cost is? Yeah. So our customer acquisition cost right now is roughly eighty dollars. We make we're we're cash flow positive on customers after three months. How does that break down? What's the eighty dollars made of? So it's uh, it, it costs us about fifty dollars to sign up a trial. Seventy five percent of them convert to paid. So that's where you get the eighty dollars, and then uh, we pay out two thirds of that as advertising. So we make we make twenty dollars a month per customer, and it pays back after three or four months. Having uh Having toured your call center at House Values back in the day, uh, you know, I think that John is, uh, it's a little unfair here because I actually saw that. And so I know that, uh, that, that John is quite analytical and scientific about how to pull this off. Um, so I, I actually think that you'll be, the consumer value, or the value proposition is there for the businesses. You have a past experience in building these call centers and measuring the analytics on it. Um, help me understand how the, the marketing spend, like, it, you know, so you're telling them how many customers that they're going to get on a certain amount of spend. Mm-hmm. You're pulling a lot of that from Google. At the end of the day, if you're telling them they're going to get 10 customers a month, they better get 10 customers a Correct. month. So, so help me understand about the efficacy of that and the feedback you're getting early on from so, the hair salon. So, so, so how we're proving that is we're, we're saying this is what we're thinking you're going to get. Try it out for 30 days, and that's pretty much going to match up to what we say. We have, we, I mean, we put on 1,000 hair salons, so we know, we know conversion data, we know keyword data, we know what the cost is going to be, and especially since the landing pages are normalized, I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen with that spend. So they go, and then sometimes it doesn't work out. That's pretty much the 25% that fall off of the free trial. The other 75% love it and want to pay us more money. When we turn one of these on, their phone starts ringing that day. Right. Um, do you get a percentage of the Google spend? Is there like a kickback or anything like that from Google for buying all this AdWords eventually? Or um, At this stage, Google helps us with uh, the acquisition cost of the customer. Uh, Google's one of our largest investors at this stage, so we have a close partnership there. Um, we're in the program where right now, because our growth is so fast, we'd rather have help acquiring the customers than get the rebate that they do offer some of their partners. Who owns the customer? Does Google own the customer, or do you own the customer? AppStack. AppStack does. So they have no login for Google? No, they don't. the customer doesn't have login to Google. They can go into our dashboard and simply modify that campaign in there. When you say Google is your largest investor? One of our largest investors. So Google Ventures? Yes. Yeah, and um, Eric Schmidt through Tomorrow Ventures is also invested in us. So you've done an angel round to date? Correct. How okay. frictionless is it for you to create that app? Like how automated it's it's that that was live that was live you should have seen me stressing out last night so yeah. this is what i don't <laughs> what i don't get you have this amazing live automated frictionless way of creating these but then you're using a, like a 19th century sales model of calling people you know and trying to you know sell them something that's from the 21st century so what i'm suggesting is if you could at least recruit or go after some kind of automated way of having these apps ready and then just emailing people and contacting all these businesses and they can play and demo with it. Whether it's on a website initially as like a, some kind of demo and it's their app, they can actually see their Great. information. Your conversions are gonna go even higher. Great idea. Probably so cost- we're opening up partnerships right now with directory services that get a lot of small business claims taking over their business listings and we're, we're automatically building in a little widget for them to claim their app right away. So we're working on that right now. We just launched self-servicing today. We're just, yeah, since we just launched this today, all the thousand customers that we've sold were, were launched sight unseen without a demo. We sold without a demo. So you are moving to, you're going to have demos pre, yeah. preset Correct. before you even contact. Correct. You've got to remember there's right. still $130 billion is spent in local advertising and only $15 billion is online. So when you say the 19th century, most of our customers are advertising in Penny Saver and don't have a web page. Awesome. Let's hear it for AppStack. Well done. Thank you. Thank you.